Today we're talking about banana flavoring, specifically the flavoring compounds that make these banana foams or banana marshmallows taste like they do, and why it's different than natural banana flavors, and I'll explain that in a second, but it has to do with chemistry back in the 1860s. And I'm also gonna show you a simple four ingredient recipe that anybody can do to replicate this flavor using all natural compounds. So let's get started. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. If this is your first time visiting the channel, I basically use science and beverage technology to help you develop drinks, whether you're somebody just doing it as a hobby at home, a bartender, or somebody looking to commercialize their own beverage. If any of that interests you, this channel's for you. So first, let's talk about why these taste like they do. And it has to do with chemistry back in the 1850s. And though you'll go on the internet and everybody will talk about the Gros Michel banana or the Big Mike and how it tasted different than the, the Cavendish of modern commerce today, that's not actually true. The Cavendish and the Gros Michel basically taste very similar. The real reason these candy bananas taste like they do is that science wasn't that evolved in the 1850s. And at this time, they just started discovering these esters and natural essences from distillation. So they distill something, separate out the compounds, and they realized that a lot of these esters were found in fruits. They only isolated about, you know, a dozen or so esters and then had a few other compounds to work with. So they only really had a catalog of 20 compounds to make a flavor from. Some of them were just naturally isolated esters from bananas and pineapples. Others were like chloroform and nitrous ether, and both that you can't use, but uh, you'll see an example of this in pineapple essence or pineapple flavor back in the 1800s. They used to use chloroform. I did a video on it. I actually tried the chloroform one. It actually tastes better, but I don't recommend drinking chloroform. It did make a good flavoring, far less candy-like than we have today, and the banana flavor back then did use chloroform as well, as well as acetyl aldehyde. But over time, those ingredients were pulled out and they, were play, they tried to keep it safer and it ended up with just being ethyl butyrate, which is from pineapple skins, and isoamyl acetate, which is from bananas. And both could be synthesized in the lab, but you can also get them all natural. And then the other issue was that back then, Refrigeration wasn't a thing. Rapid transportation wasn't a thing. This banana flavor, most people in the 1870s and 1880s may not have actually tried a banana before they tried the artificial flavor. Because it was very popular at soda fountains and some of the early liqueurs used these compounds. But only having two ingredients doesn't create the natural complex nature of a banana. And that's just the simple reason these things taste like they do, is that chemists at the time and flavor formulators only had a few ingredients to work with, and they were just doing very rough approximations of what a flavor was. Let's talk about making a banana flavoring, because it's super simple. Again, you can use two ingredients, but I stretched it out to four just to kind of give it a little bit more natural flavor, but it's not that far off from these. If you need to, you only need to use amyl or isoamyl acetate and ethyl butyrate. This is pineapple, uh, this is banana. I've added a uh, strawberry glycinate or aldehyde C16 and clove. And if you're only to pick one of these two, add clove oil, or this one's actually methyl isoeugenol, it's just an isolate. But if you have clove oil, that will work. And you only need a few drops of it, but there is kind of a natural clove flavor to bananas. It's very mild, as much in the background but it's there. So to make this, we're only gonna make about 25 milliliters of this, and this will flavor a lot. One to two mils can flavor a liter of syrup, and then you can use an ounce of that syrup to make a soda, but this will go a long way. Uh, it's not expensive and anybody can do it. So let me show you how it's done. So the first step is to take some isoamyl acetate, or banana oil as some people call it, and add two grams to a bottle or a beaker. Next, we're gonna use some ethyl butyrate, sometimes called pineapple oil. Uh, it does have somewhere between pineapple and banana, but it does help uh, expand the flavor and make it more interesting. So we need two grams of this. Uh, 
And if you're above or below, that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, it was used in all sorts of different ratios back in the day and whatever you prefer, you can use it. So you can use three grams of this and one gram of this and however you wanna vary it, that is fine. Next ingredient, uh, aldehyde C16. This one has just a strawberry flavor and some bananas do have a kind of a strawberry hint in them, especially those little ones. But we're just gonna use 0.2 grams of this. So just a few drops. And lastly, uh, you can use clove oil. I'm using methyl isoeugenol, uh, just because it, it's clear and it's more stable in when you put it in the bottle and store it for a while. But again, clove oil will work and 0.2 grams of this. And that is it for the flavor compounds. Now all we have to do is add some alcohol and we're just gonna add about 20.6 grams of alcohol and I'm just using some high proof vodka. I do recommend using alcohol in this. You can use propylene glycol, uh, but it may separate. You can just shake it up before you use it. Something over, you know, 60%, this is 76%. Uh, you can use Everclear, so you can, you can use 95% alcohol. Uh, it will create a really stable formulation that will last for years on a shelf. But for my purposes, I'm just gonna use this 76% and it will work just fine. And we just need 20.6 grams of this. So I just pour a little bit into a beaker and then pour it in here. And that is your banana flavor formula. You just put a lid on it and give it a shake and it should be ready to go. So like I said, you can add one drop of this to any drink that's 100 to 200 mils in volume. And you can also use it to flavor a syrup. So one to two mils in a liter of syrup, maybe a little more. Uh, it all depends. You're not gonna hurt anybody or yourself if you have more, it'll just taste unpleasant. So you can just use this in many different ways. It's really easy. And once you get started with this, you can start using other compounds. So you'll find that you'll see something called isoamyl butyrate. And I know if you haven't studied chemistry, it can be confusing. So that's why I put all the recipes over on Patreon. So you can read the names and the, the catalog numbers for these and kind of order them, but it will work just as well. So isoamyl butyrate's kind of banana-esque, but it has a different flavor. You can work some, um, you know, there's isobutyl acetate, which is again, gonna give a slightly different flavor, but the more of these you play with and kind of, you can create your own flavor using all sorts of compounds. So hexyl acetate, kind of give a more green note maybe. And anyway, you can play with it in a lot of different ways. You can add vanilla to this, that was pretty common. But again, it's something you just play with and you end up with this flavor. And you can use it in candies, you can use it however you want. And that is basically it. That's how simple it is to make a banana flavor for banana syrup. You can make banana martinis, banana soda, whatever you wanna do, this is your starting point. And if you need more information, you can ask questions over on Patreon. If it's something, if it's a general question that everybody should know, post it down below and I will answer. But also check out the rest of the channel. There's tons of information on there. And if you find this stuff really informative and you wanna see more, please do consider supporting the channel. This is a very niche channel. It doesn't get a lot of views, but the information is really good. So check out Patreon, even on the lowest level, your support is really appreciated. It's what keeps, go, keeps this whole thing going and allowing me to buy all the compounds and waste them by making multiple different variations. So I can give to you the best formula or starting point, which you can then take to be your own with some additions. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.